Hey, you're listening to Tech Talks with Lou and I'm Lou Temmuth. I hope you're having a good day and I'm really thankful for you listening. So this is Tech Talks with Lou, the show in which I discuss the top tech secrets for success from the best in today's digital world. Last time I spoke with Juice, a superhero skater with a mission to teach as many people as possible to skate. We spoke about his skate history and technology in skating, as well as his growth on social media and his dreams to broadcast a skate dance show. If you haven't already listened, head back after this episode and let me know what you think. My guest today has nearly a decade working in technology and hospitality and has launched the world's first app for alcohol-free drinks discovery. I'd like to welcome Johnny Stevens from Better Without App to my podcast. Hi, Johnny. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, really good. I'm so pleased you composed yourself because prior to this recording, we were both in pieces. Anyway, <laughs> let's let's continue to be professional, um, but Ooh. with a sense with a sense of fun. So when we were talking off air, we discovered that we had a connection. We both lived and worked in Twyford and Reading in the UK. Um, you many, many years uh, younger than myself. But um, at that point, when I was kind of living and working in that area, I was also working in a pub um, in addition to my day job, uh, which is kind of fun. But um, today we're talking about alcohol free uh, choices and um, and the app that you built. So, kind of bringing the technology and the the alcohol free choice to to light. So, um, talk to me a bit about your background and because in the intro I mentioned technology and hospitality. Yes. So, seemingly unusual combination, um, yeah. but uh, it sounds like they do go hand in hand. They do. Yes. Um... So I guess, where do I start? Um, so my, well, I think we'll come on to sort of my college and that part, you know, past um, probably later. But I, when I left college, I went and worked for Metro Bank. Um, at the time was very small. They only had six sites. They were really growing. I I originally hated the idea of working for someone. I always wanted my own business. Um, but at, 17 got offered a job with Metro Bank and took it um you know had a great time there but but after about two years got a bit bored um I'm sure very yeah sort of entrepreneurs get bored quite easily um and uh so anyway so I quit the job and uh then didn't have anything to go to which was probably not the wisest move um and in it actually what happens my um I'd done some work experience for my parents neighbor um, when I was at school and he ran a software company that specialized in dealing with hospitality so uh typically sort of catering companies that dealt with schools or workplaces um, but also sort of restaurants um so I I ended up joining them uh, to cover someone's maternity leave and again not really knowing what that would what that would lead to um but I ended up uh climbing that 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 company um in the end sitting on on the board um I think I was 20 I think 22 at the time um so yeah was there was their sort of business development director there working with you know huge companies um you know some of the biggest sort of operators within and suppliers within hospitality um and then, you know, for me, I loved, I loved hospitality. I loved the the buzz. Um, I have a background in events as well. Um, so they sort of came hand in hand. And whilst I was there, I think I, I got my love of technology and almost problem solving. Um, you know, I like to, I like to challenge developers and, you know, because I think, you know, I'm not a developer and I've put that that one out there but I, <laughs> uh, okay okay to... all all developers this Johnny sounds like the sort of person in the business that makes your life really yes. difficult no I'm not. <laughs> I'm not no I think no I think um I no I think I, I I we were working on sort of an older um older code base older system yeah. and 
you know, we, I, I was very much, you know, I, lo- I, I, I looked at stuff logically and I loved, I loved sort of getting involved. I wasn't meant to be too much in the technical side, but, you know, we'd get involved in, yeah. you know, how do we structure stuff? And, and I learned so much, I think from my, my boss there who chap called Mike Day learned so much about, about business, about dealing with technical yeah. teams and, and everything. Um, but, you know, it was a hard and fast sort of, you know, I joined the business when allergens were came into sort of force, you know, when it started to become legislation and, you know, suddenly having to deal with 400 suppliers to get allergen information in that they never knew that they had to then provide. And so, yeah, yeah it was great fun sort of structuring that. Um, and then from there, I got um, I got approached to work uh for a startup um and it's a company called 10 kites and they had come up with something that i just i just loved i loved what they were doing they were essentially being the sort of i don't want to say middleware but you know the middle uh between sort of your recipe systems and your stock systems to the outer world to dealing with you know everything from you know websites to delivery to you know till systems basically anywhere that a menu for hospitality needed to get to that's what yeah. they did. So I joined them and, and we, you know, we took that from, I think when I joined maybe four or five clients, not, you know, they had some big clients already, but to, you know, a lot of the high street using the system. Um, yeah. And I just love that, that sort of project work. Yeah. I kind of want to go back to um, your kind of growth in, in your kind of early twenties, the, mm. the real kind of, you know, becoming a, a director. Um, now, I think and there might be a number of us that kind of rose to fame in our early 20s and kind of became amazingly successful at that point. Um, and then others that are, you know, kind of still working their way through. But I think there becomes a, there's a special sort of mindset and a, a drive and ambition that comes, um, you know, from life in being able mm. to get to that point. Um, and then being you know, kind of drawing on the inquisitive nature to grow your imagination and your knowledge. Certainly, you know, it sounds like working uh, on the, on the business with kind of tech and development teams. You know, that's a really great space, and I can mm. resonate with that. You know, I kind of ended up working in tech and then becoming part of the business, and then kind of working back the other way. And it's really fulfilling to see and be part of that process as well as mm. know some of the technology and the challenges because you know development work uh, as we know is very timely and very costly um, and yes it's getting easier with all sorts of you know AI interventions <laughs> and things uh, and being able to you know develop an app uh, just a, a single voice command today um, as I was testing out yesterday with a particular system it's all about making our lives easier so <laughs> Kind of going back to your your growth um, at that point and, and kind mm. of being the hospitality. So these are menu systems and booking systems. Yeah, menus, um, stock, um, everything from sort of rotary to stock to ordering so from suppliers. Is this more back end for hospitality? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So it's not something we would know about. It's all the back end systems. No. Um, yeah. Kind of use. So the, the the first business I, I was with, a company called Indicator, was was very much back office system. You know, you you wouldn't know it as a you know as yeah. a consumer. Um, and then the second company I, I I joined, you know, they do they do things like the website, like the menu page, for example, for Wagabummers. And yeah. if you go into a lot of the uh, sort of TGI Fridays and Frankie and Benny's and you ask about allergen information someone is likely to come with a tablet and that was that was our system but yeah. you know it wasn't it wasn't branded as as Tenkites it was always branded as the as the customer um yeah. so but yeah for for me it was you know I, I loved I loved having something that gave people a, a solution and you know I yeah. think back in sort of 2014 uh when when i sort of started you know that ordering from suppliers within hospitality still back then was pick you know a lot of organization picking up a phone you know yeah the, exactly if, i mean i i remember working in the pub and 
And uh, yeah, it's like phone orders have to be in by a certain time in the morning and then they get delivered this the next morning. And it's all very paper based yeah. or at least it was, you know, um, yeah. from, from I, then back. Uh, it might even still be somewhat today, but uh, obviously the regulations and such like uh, have kind of come along such a long way. So yeah, um, it sounds and, like a great automated offering. Yeah. And I think, you know, you think back 2014, I mean, you know, Amazon was still sort of, you know, ten, that's almost what, eight, you know, seven, uh, nine years ago. That's quite yeah. a long time ago when you, when you think about it. And, you know, what we know today of online shopping and everything that, you know, that wasn't as, as common. And then you think of business and that really yeah. wasn't common, you know, yeah. a chef wanted to pick up the phone because he knew his mate who you know was was the fishmonger or the butcher yeah. and and you know they'd have yeah that that relationship you know what have you what you catch today and that kind of stuff so yeah. you know trying to then convince chefs that this was going to make their life easier yeah and chefs typically have gone into you know chef and because they don't want computers they don't want yeah, to be in exactly. that in that world so you know it's quite fascinating mm-hmm. um you know being part of of that um mm. and you know sort of see seeing that through chefs have a you know that they, they you're right they're in it for the the chefing they don't need or want or feel like their life could be enhanced by having all these other things you know they're yeah. not there to do the admin they're not there to do the stock but actually we know that they need to be calculating gross profit and all of the other things um you know that go into producing the amazing food that they produce yeah and 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 as well i think you know it's especially with allergen information um like that's a big responsibility for a server or for a chef to to have to take on you know to yeah someone who's got a severe allergy um you know you they you yeah if you give them the wrong information that's that's a, a a big problem and that's why i loved the, the the second business i was part of because we essentially gave you know the servers or, or um you know waiter waiter or waitresses the ability to hand over a tablet and say look you know here's our menu go and filter yeah. and 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 you know i think it's that's made a big difference to you know if you're an allergy sufferer to have the confidence that you can see you know see it it's not on a piece of paper it's a digital thing it's just that element of confidence yes you're listening to tech talks with lou and i'm lou temlett and today i'm talking with johnny stevens from the better without app so we've talked a lot about hospitality and i want to now focus on the the alcohol or the the alcohol free side yes. uh, and the transition you've kind of made I didn't start drinking till I was probably about 21. Um, so I was not, you know, when I was uh, at Metro Bank and everything, people would go out. I mean, I was 17 when I started, so I couldn't even go you know, go out. Um, yeah. And so I wasn't really interested in, in alcohol, wasn't really, yeah, I, I hadn't grown up with it. My parents didn't really drink. Um, so it wasn't a big, a big thing in, in my life. And then I think, as you, you know, especially working in, in hospitality, if you go to networking events and everything, there's all there's always wine, there's always beer, and yeah. and I, you know, networking doesn't isn't a natural thing that you yes, it's it's hard, it's really yeah. hard, and mm-hmm. yeah, there's probably a reason why a lot of networking events there's alcohol because it it yeah. just helps that you know people relax and <clears throat> but I. I found when I was was at those networking events, I, I would have a drink, but then I'd be worrying about what I was saying. Um, so my, actually, I, what I found with my drinking suit, sort of 23 to probably sort of 25, was that it actually caused me more anxiety than making me feel relaxed because I, yeah. you know, I never forgot what I said or anything, but it was always that, that, oh god you know was I you know should I not have said something or or whatever and I you know I'm sure I never did but you, it's just that anxiety that that eats mm. you up um and I you know I was I was finding that probably 2019 so just before the pandemic 
you know, I'd got into a good place with work and, um, you know, I was, you know, things, think life was, was going okay. And then, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, there was a few sort of personal things that, that happened with family and, and, you know, you, I think to, to process those, I, I thought actually I'd drink alcohol rather than sort of process them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, not to get, get drunk or anything, but just to have that sort of relax to forget. And, but I think it's, for me, what I found is that it would, you know, happen in, in the week rather than, yeah. So it, at the time it was okay at the weekends, but when it starts impacting your work and you feel rough the next day, it's not, you know, it's not how you, yeah. how I wanted to be. Um, yeah. And then um, sort of 2020, um, I so I've just gone gone through early 2020, just gone through through a breakup. I've moved back into to my house that I had with my brother, and you know I was then March 2020, end of March 2020, I was put on furlough. Yeah, you know, the the hospitality industry just you know died a death. Um, yeah, you know it was it was probably one of the weirdest moments of you know, seeing stock markets, seeing like people saying they're closing their pubs and, and just thinking, oh my goodness, this this industry that I've known for most of my career just stop. Yes. Um and so I was put I was put on furlough and I had this suddenly had this this time where I mean it, when you think back to it, it's the weirdest time. But I would go out on my bike for, you know, 30 mile bike ride and you never see anyone or or anything and um you know I'd then come home maybe three o'clock and go well actually three o'clock let's have a beer you know that there was no time of of day yeah. because it was yeah we were on furlough the weather was lovely and and uh so it was a very very weird time so I I you know I wasn't getting massively massively drunk or anything but just having a you know beer throughout the day and then for me, there was one one sort of pivotal moment where I, I decided actually I'm I'm not going to drink anymore, and that was that was my friend's birthday, and I, you know, we we had not been around people for for weeks, and then suddenly I think it was the first time we allowed thirty people outside, and that's quite an anxious moment, you know, yeah. having not seen people or seeing people at a two meter distance and yeah. then suddenly you've got 30 of you and I I found that very uncomfortable and ended up just drinking far far too much yeah. um and you know just not really remembering how I was I remember going to the the bar and um you know asking for two pints of Guinness and down in one and walking off with the other one and it for me the next day was just like actually I've I've had enough um and but it it was actually in between I was starting to drink anyway a lot less before before that moment and starting to get into alcohol free drinks and I could see that there was a market and I was starting to drink a a lot less before that moment anyway um and then I came up I had come up with this idea of the the app and I I think yeah knowing that actually if I was going to do and out for alcohol free drinks I probably couldn't be that person that's also going out and getting you know getting drunk um yeah. so that was a big part of uh going actually do you know what I'm launching this this app um I'm gonna I'm gonna stop and I never set I never set a time I never said right actually I'm gonna stop for 30 days or I'm gonna stop for but I just said I'm gonna stop and see where that you know where that leads me yeah. and I you know I've never I've never found a situation where I'm like, actually, I want to drink. I need a drink. Yeah. Um, and, you know, even like my best friend's wedding, where I was her man of honor, like I had my alcohol free options and they were amazing. The venue were amazing at, you know, coming around serving me, knowing that I was you know, the only one probably not drinking. Um, so, I, you know, I think you, you learn to to live with those, those sort of different occasions. One of the big things, though, with with sort of networking is that actually I probably find that easier now, not 
feeling that pressure of okay I'm gonna have a drink and then what am I gonna yeah. say or anything yeah so I think the the whole kind of alcohol free and the choices um, out there is often quite a challenge um, I've been uh, drinking alcohol free um, beer IPA for um, I don't know six seven eight months now um, and I absolutely love it because it tastes amazing. Um, and I haven't quite done the transition to wine. I, I need to be informed by you and uh, the sober sommelier. Um, yes. We'll, we'll do a name drop there. Um, but uh, I often watch your discussions and, and follow uh, for advice. But, um, you know, it, it's becoming more, but it's still quite hard to find, even in supermarkets, alcohol free it's getting easier um but it's certainly a lot easier you know I, i've gone to you know a kind of pub in the town um and i know that they have a lovely uh alcohol free gin um but on one occasion i had the last shot and then went the week after and they didn't have any and i was like mm. i just okay so i'm stuck um yeah. so uh, you know there's that uh, availability and knowing that people are out there asking for alcohol-free yeah. um, drinks. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, I think for for me, like the majority of the consumers of alcohol-free are not uh, are not people who, like me that have just decided to completely stop. It, you know, it is the people who are moderating or driving or just. I think the yeah. the pandemic was a real wake up call for a lot of people that had drunk you know drunk a lot or yeah or actually went into the pandemic going I've drunk a lot before and I'm gonna stop because I was I didn't have those social pressures of having to go to the pub every Friday or or, or yeah. whatever it is but you're right I think it you know it is getting a lot better in you know sort of hospitality retail you know that they they are getting better but again it's hit and miss depending on where you where you live um, yes and, and if you find a popular drink that you like then there's lots of other people that like that particular popular drink and then you yeah. go the shelves are empty where where's yeah. my favorite you know uh, alcohol free yeah. tipple well I, I i'm always i mean i I, I think i said my last drink ever was with a was a guinness and i'm such a big fan of guinness and when they came out with their alcohol free i was like i, I went it's hunting for it it's, it's so fantastic. Good. It does taste absolutely amazing. Yeah. Uh, I would vouch for for that particular beverage. <laughs> it's it, it is good, but but you know you you mentioned you're an IPA drinker, mm. and I I love an IPA. I like to nail. Um, but there there's you know, not a lot in 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 the pubs. It typically is sort of a Heineken Zero or a Lucky yeah. Saint or you know something that's a lager. Um, yeah. It's good. And they're getting, all they're all better. canned as well. I mean, I, I was chatting with uh one pub or kind of venue owner, and they were saying that, you know, because beer only lasts a certain number of days because mm. it's fresh and whatever, um, that they don't have the the demand right now yeah. for that. So they can't then invest in the stock because it then would cost their business more money. So it's being able to find, you know. Uh, you know available drinks in cans but how nice would it be to go into a pub and have a, a pint pulled that was alcohol free um, there's there's probably about I think there's about 200 places in the UK that do alcohol free beer on on draft um, and again that I think that's only gonna gonna increase I think it is you're right it's it, it takes time to to get through that and I think you know people have to not just have one barrel and go oh it didn't work they yeah you, know, you do need to persist yeah. a bit with it um yeah but but yeah there, there is definitely some some more options the way guinness is rolling out their special tap that's sort of sort of a can but on draft again very yeah. very clever but that that is the way you know yeah. way it will become normalized Mm. and uh yeah it, it's down to us as consumers to be have that desire you know i think in the past alcohol free um drinks haven't tasted quite so great you know they've kind of lacked the intensity of flavor and you know uh, producers are doing such an amazing job right now in mm. making them taste more like the alcohol versions but without the alcohol um yeah and, uh, and the thing is that you 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 learn to like alcohol, right? So yes, no, you know, you don't you don't 
have your I can't think of anyone who's had their first sip of alcohol and gone oh my god I loved it you know that beer and gone oh or the you yeah know, for, for me it was cider oh my gosh yeah, absolutely <laughs> was... horrific it's like who anyway I'm sure there's lots of people that love cider um yeah. but uh yeah that lots of kind of first drinks for you know kind of uh, 18 19 year olds or even the 20 something because like you you know I I didn't really get into alcohol until my parents didn't drink or they don't drink um and um you know it was the wine tasting I was yeah. working in a pub and I want to be more knowledgeable in that field and that was that was the the in for me actually mm. tasting um and then pairing with food having your app you're able to then go and you know, find venues that yes. have the amazing food, that have the alcohol free, and you can still be complimented a gorgeous meal with yeah. alcohol free alternatives. And I think that's for me, being a foodie as well, um, you know, that's that's a real bonus that if yeah. if suppliers, restaurateurs, you know, bar owners that offer food can offer that option, you know, it goes hand in hand because it's still a social thing, isn't it? It's a, it's a massive social thing and and you know the you know so many restaurants you know sort of high-end restaurants putting in pairing menus with wines and you know it's all very much around you know alcohol and and, and that and I remember actually before before I decided to give up drink back in January 2020 so before this was even like on my mind of mm. you know coming up with an app or anything I remember um I, when I left uh, the previous company I was at, I got given a voucher to have a meal at Tom Kerridge's um, Hand and Flower, which is, you know, I think three, two Michelin star restaurant in Marlow, yes. beautiful. But they did two alcohol free cocktails and they were incredible. I mean, they weren't cheap, they were £15 a cocktail, but yep. the love and the um, just the flavours that they brought out was incredible and that for me was like a wow this is like people can't complain about a taste gap you know if a lot yeah. of love is put into it um then then the flavors are are there and you know i think you know for me i always used to drink beer because i like the flavor i didn't drink it to get to get drunk or anything yeah. um but yeah as you say you know for us so with the app we have i think 400 brands it's about 1,300 products um, and that's always growing I mean you know the amount of new products coming to market all the time is, is just incredible. So 1,300 products is that alcohol free worldwide or are we just talking UK? Um, that's that's worldwide um, I think UK is probably probably about 800 900 of that. Um, that's incredible yeah because you kind of go to the supermarkets and you see maybe five, if that, um, alcohol-free alternatives. But to know that even today there are 800 in the UK, yeah. 800 alcohol-free alternatives yeah. to – that's there's, amazing. There's loads. And and I think, you know, there's so many that have come out of people, you know, founder stories that they've gone out for – dinner or whatever and gone they don't have an option for me and they've then yeah. created something and there's so many amazing founder stories and you know one of the things that when I first started the app um before people join you know put their brand and product on the app I had a zoom call with them so I probably spoke with 300 odd brands and people and found out their story and I just it was it was fascinating to, to hear you know why people were creating these products what they you know what they thought and you know it's a real you've got a real variety of, of products you know whether it's you know the beer category is very strong it has been strong for but you know now spirits and you know things that you can literally create you know alcohol cocktails with alcohol free so an amaretti sour or um you know one of the big things that, that's happening more and more now is you know functional products you know people yeah. wanting something uh from the drinks they don't want alcohol but they want whether it's cbd or whether it, um you know sort of mushrooms or something that's within the product that then gives yeah. that addition oh 
That's something new. I've, I've kind of researching different coffees and teas with mushrooms in at the moment. So, um, mm. Certainly that's my kind of direction. But um, yeah, I, I hadn't, it hadn't occurred to me that if it's alcohol free, then people are wanting something more than just the alcohol free. They want some additional benefits to um, to having that as well. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just sold on the flavor of the, of the IPAs, to be honest. I'm yeah. OK with that. Yeah, that ticks my box. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but I, th- I think you know, people people want whether it's a you know a kick or whether it's a relax or you know they feel that alcohol free you know some some products you know and some consumers feel like it's almost you know well what's what's the point and I mean yeah we could sit here all day long and try and yeah. try and argue <laughs> argue that with them but but. You know, those are the people that maybe won't be convinced, but they may be convinced by what's coming next. This sort of next generation of products of that would give you that sort of buzz, but without you know getting you drunk. Yes, you're listening to Tech Talks with Lou, and I'm Lou Temlett, and today I'm talking with Johnny Stevens from the Better Without app. So, Johnny, I want to kind of move on and talk about your app development. Mm. Um, so whilst we talk about hospitality, technology and the kind of growth of alcohol free beverages in the UK and worldwide um, to be well over a thousand uh, different products. Um, tell us about your your app and the development. Yeah. So the so I originally came up with the idea in July 2020. Um, so middle of middle of the pandemic. and I first thing I did was go okay go on to the Apple store and go or app store is there any app out there for alcohol free and there wasn't and I was like that's crazy like there's how's there not and then I went on to like untapped the beer app and all the products got slated you know really bad ratings and I just thought this that's not like that's not right they're good products they deserve their own space. So I did a little deck um, of, right, what did, what did I want the app to do? And then I worked with a designer that I'd previously worked with and and basically gave her a very rough sketch of this is what I want the app to look like within reason. But, you know, go and use your creative flow, but this is some apps that I like. Um, and she came back with the design and it just like it was it it was that was it you know straight away I was like oh my goodness that's brought this idea to life yeah um and I'm only on day three at this point so I've I've come up with the idea briefed it to the designer and then day three got designs back and went I want to do I want to do this um and so my partner um ended up creating uh, he's he's a developer, so he ended up creating sort of a very very light version of like this is what it could. So then again, you know, sort of having to play with it and going, oh yeah, that could work. And then uh, about a week later, I I spoke with a development agency and they said, yeah, we can we can do it. Um, and then I was like, right, so they you know we've got the app designs, but it's much more complex than just some designs you know there there is so much behind this so we behind every drink so you've got yeah a brand you've then got a drink and you've got well what is that drink it's a beer and what type of beer and what country and what calories and what milliliters and you name it there's so much information and then where are they stocked whether it's online or venues and and you go oh my goodness I've got to get all this information um and so i i spent then a couple of days really mapping out exactly structurally data structure how did i want it to to work how did i want it to be configured so you know going okay right we've got a a retailer and a retailer will have those products and those products will be linked to that brand and um and then presented that you know back to the, the development agency they they got going and i think from from idea to an app ready ready to launch we were, we were 16 weeks um with That's the portal cool. everything uh, amazing like amazing um when i think back to it i'm like oh my god that wasn't bad 
that's four months um yeah. and then I remember us having well I remember having this moment of going hmm, I've not really spoken to anyone about the app uh I've not actually spoken to any brand so I'm not sure if any brands will ever upload their information <laughs> I'm not sure if anyone will download yeah it was like the worst yeah. market research but I think yeah. we see so you, so you had your designs built your product yes. done. okay there's no users there's nobody using this thing what next yeah and it, so so we so it was December 2020 we put it into Apple got it got it um I remember that I really was like desperate to get it in as early as possible I wanted to be that first you know I thought there's no way that there's not other people in the world thinking about coming up with an app like yeah it, it's got to be you know people and there are other apps um uh, out there they've done a good job of, of of what they're doing they're slight you know each one's slightly different um but you know I was like right we need to get this in and I remember being you know I can't remember it failed on something of Apple and I remember being distraught like oh my god you know I spent all this time working and and Actually, I think it was we put in Apple, you know, signing with Apple ID, and they didn't even get past that bit. They tried signing, it failed. And oh I remember no! Doing, and I remember just being so disheartened by yeah. you know all this time rushing, 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 and then it get re rejected. Anyway, we we stripped that out, put it back in the next night, and it, it it got approved. And I remember, yeah, I remember when it got approved. I was like, oh my goodness, this is this is real. This is happening. Yeah. Um, and then by this point, we'd started to speak with a couple of brands and I remember being delighted, like we didn't charge brands. So it was like, we got an email back from a brand who says they're going to log into our portal and they're going to upload the information. I was like, wow, this is like, that's amazing. Um, and so we, we, we launched with, so we launched sort of on Apple end of December, 2020. And, and then, uh, about a week later with with android and um i remember us getting so much stick because we hadn't didn't do them at the same time and android users yeah. were were kicking off um but android users make up such a small percentage of our, our overall users which is really interesting yeah and uh, so so we released this app and i remember so we launched the android app and i remember oh, about two weeks in you know, we probably had, I don't know, 50 brands at this point. It was still early days. And, and I, I wanted to make sure the information that came in on, for the app came from the brands because then we knew it was yes. proper. You know, we knew yeah. that it was I, – I went on so many different websites and saw the same product with different information. I was like, I can't have that. Yeah. It's got to be the truth. Yeah. Um, that, dating, that's you know, really – date is so important. Yes, it is. And and that was kind of what I was going to say. It's like, how do you build an app without any dummy data? So as a developer myself, um, you know, you always use data and you try and have it the best quality. And you're right. When you're entering, you know, a, a kind of batch of data, you can miss bits out or you might not have data for this, that and the other. But the only person that has true good data integrity behind their data are going to be the brands. So yeah. it feels, whilst it feels volatile to launch without anything, your you, your mindfulness to actually wait for good quality data um, yeah. sounds like it's really paid off. Yeah, it, it, it has. And despite the one review that always grates at me, I remember two weeks in, you know, just launched this app, really proud. And I go onto the Android store and it says, I've got more beers in my shed than on this app. And I, thought, oh, and I no. just thought, I was like, oh, God, that's, you know, you're probably right. But, you know, it's, yeah, come on. Anyway, so, but, you know, and, and we started to get, you know, the Android users were more critical than Apple users. Yes. And I remember getting another thing, oh, it's a great app, but, you know, got a long way to go. And, yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, you've, I've just launched. Um, yeah, give but, me a break. <laughs> yeah, but one, one thing I, I I did and and is contact those users and or get them to contact us and and then engage with them because they're your yes. best users, right? So yes, exactly. Someone, if they've got something to say, then listen to them because yeah. they can help. Yeah, and they have, and and they are they're like our our super users that you know. Uh, you know some of them I've got them to test stuff and I'm still in touch with all of them and 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 that was yeah. that was great um 
and yeah, the, then the first so so that was that was ja- January twenty one, and we then spent I'd say probably two or three months just getting those brands on board, slowly use building the users. You know, I remember yeah, every if you got five new users, it was like oh my goodness, you know, I don't know yeah. these people. How are they finding yeah. out about it? Um, and then we then we decided that we'd launch in the US because we we could see that about 20% of our users were coming from the US and we thought well let's let's give it a go and then we launched in Australia and we launched in Canada um we got you know featured in women's health like we didn't even know they didn't even ask us we just sent one of the brands got in touch and said oh we saw you in women's health and I was like what like and yeah you know at the bottom of this page it's like yeah app, uh, something like great new apps or something like that that you need to download and, and wow. there's the app and I was like whoa um and then so yeah so we 2020 was 2021 was very much about building this app building it out um we launched you know when, when we launched uh, initially hospitality was still closed still COVID yeah. so we then had to sort of my original idea of really showing which pubs and restaurants wasn't going to work because they weren't open. So we sort of pivoted to go right. Where where do we focus our attention development wise initially? Um, and and then and these are all things you learn along the way in the, the the journey. And you know, I remember the first development agency that that did the sort of I suppose it was the MVP really. I remember them saying to me, you know, we, we were using Google Firebase and they were like, you know, um, if you want to scale this, that, you know, you may not be able to as much. And I was like, yeah, be all right. And then we launched the Our Places bit and you know, suddenly we've got thousands of bits of data. You know, we've yeah. got loads of bits. And I remember launching the, the Places feature where you could go in, say, show me all the different venues around me. I remember going to London and it just crashed, you know, because yeah. London had two, three hundred venues that was trying to bring yeah. back all the drinks, all the. Yeah. I remember thinking, oh my God. So we, yeah, then had to go back to the drawing board and new database and, you know, structure. Yeah. And you, you learn all these things along the way, you know. Yes. Of how, how do you structure stuff? Um, yeah. You know, to, yeah. to get it right. Yeah, and that that was one of my challenges, you know, my university years and development and, you know, normalizing databases and and now running my own business. It's like, you know, building in an infrastructure that can last you at least the the kind of test of time or the test of data, as it were, you know, the minimum viable product um, to actually work and grow. um, Else you have to then have a massive amount of investment to rebuild the whole thing rather than starting from a, a really good strong foundation um yeah. yeah well and and also you know you you use obviously different third party whether it's plugins or database or what, whatever it is yeah and then they decide to do an update and yes. they don't care about little johnny's app who you know better without that is you know small fry for them that you know they're, yeah. they're going to be annoyed if they you know annoy microsoft or someone that you yeah. know is huge they're not going to care about you know yeah. my little app so they'll do a change and suddenly it's like oh my na- you know now we have to rush and fix something and yeah and it's, so it's you, how you, you learn breath of all the developments yeah. isn't it yeah uh, so you learn a lot along the way and 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 then for me that that's when I got to the point of what what do I do next it was sort of October 2021 been doing it pretty much full I quit my job to, to focus on it full time yeah. Um, and then it was like, what, what next, you know, yeah. where, where do you, where do you take this? So you'd already been featured in magazines. You'd already kind of, you know, developed something that worked. You had mm. brands on board. Um, now I'm assuming investment is the next step forward for you. Yeah. So, well, I was at that pivotal point of what do I do? And up until this point completely self-backed it um and so you know from idea to this point we're talking what about 14 months and 
you know, money's running dry. I'm not paying myself and I'm paying everyone else. And, you know, developers don't come cheap. Um, you know, they're highly skilled people, but they don't come cheap. And I, I kept all the development in, in, in the UK, um, which again, is, is more expensive. Um, but so I was at the point of, right, do, what do I do? Do I go crowdfunding? Do I go for investment? Do I, what do I do? So I started to, right, let's put down the business plans. Let's work with finance people to, you know, let's maybe crowdfund it. And then I started to do a bit of research into crowdfunding. And it's like, oh, well, you need a lead investor. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, how long is that going to take me to find a lead investor? And at this point, you're going, it, I'm at the point where, Someone with big money, if they want to come in and develop an app, that you know they could blow us out. Like that would be that could be it. Um, and what you know, finding a lead investor could take six months. It could take you know. I, I was so it was such a. I was getting into territory that I was like, I have no idea about this. Like I have yeah. no, you know. I've always worked for people who, who've done that. You know. You, I've never had to speak with investors or or anything. Um, so I, I started to sort of pull together all the decks and and start to push it around a few few investors. Um, and then I was approached by an American company um, called Better Roads, and I I love what they were doing. They were you know, they're an alcohol free uh, distributor wholesaler. Um, D to C have some of their own brands, a number of things. And we'd worked with them previously on some campaigns on the app. Um, and, you know, I sort of sat down with them and they, I said about going for investment and they said, well, we could, we could buy you. Maybe we'll look at that. And I thought, hmm, okay, maybe. And then didn't think anything else of it. That was just a conversation that happened over a sort of coffee. And then, and then, Probably six weeks later, I get an email saying, oh, we want to continue discussions. And I'm like, oh, they, this was genuine. Like, you know, was, <laughs> this was because you, know, you just don't know, do you? You know, someone saying, oh, we could buy it or whatever. Yeah, I, I, I had no idea. So then then we um, yeah, we worked we worked through an acquisition. So back in they actually acquired the app back in May uh, of well, now last year, 20. 22 um so it's now it's now owned by by them um i still work i now work for them um so contracting back to them so it's it's great because it's still my baby it's still my little yeah. you know it's still my baby but i'm seeing it doing some great things and the u the us is slightly further behind the uk in terms of alcohol free it's massively yeah. growing yeah. um but you know bars and restaurants you know, I, I did a search when we first launched the places in the, the US. I think the top 50 restaurants in New York, only 10 or something had alcohol free options. So it's still a bit further behind. Yeah. Um, but it's great because we're, you know, working with them. The app's growing. We were featured by Good Morning America um, last week. And that didn't, I didn't know about it. And suddenly you see your you know, numbers go through the roof. You know, we, we, Wow. Yeah, you know, we I think we had a thousand new users in a day. And I remember looking at you know our, our dashboard that we have for it and I thought, oh no, there must be a mistake. Like <laughs> but where have all these come from? Like suddenly, you know, 30, 40 new users or whatever a day, and and then suddenly you see a thousand and you're like, that can't be right. Like something <laughs> <laughs> the integrity of the data is a bit off <laughs> yeah i was I, you know you start worrying and then you work back and you go i know that that was on on a t you know top morning tv show and you know wow. they literally it had its own little feature um wow. you know where they, they basically talked about all oh, alcohol free drinks and they said well if you're going out you know there's this app and it's better with that and i remember i remember like last week being like oh my god i created that you did create that. That's amazing. Which is weird. And th and this is only going to grow. So I, I kind of you've got seven and a half thousand organic users already mm. on your app. Um, yeah. You've kind of been running for not very long, um, mm. and it's only going to grow from now, which is just incredible. Yeah, um, I, I'm excited to see where it 
where it grows and you know there's always new brands coming out and you know i think the big thing is going to be you know how do you keep on top of the the data you know how do you keep on top of you know venues changing yeah. drinks and that and we're crowdsourcing some information and 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 yeah. doing it you know through through that route but it you know we've got an exciting journey ahead um and yeah so it's it to have found it and to have been through that experience um you know i'm sure i'm sure one day I'll, I'll i'll do another business but um but it's nice to have built it sold it still working on it and then see see what else you're listening to Tech Talks with Lou and I'm Lou Temlett and today I'm talking with Johnny Stevens from the Better Without app. What's next for you Johnny? You've got this app, you've sold it, you're, everything's going swimmingly, organic users are growing, alcohol-free producers and brands are growing in UK and around the world. What's next for you? So continue continue building the app, um, continue working, working. Now, now having a bit of a team as well is 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 really good um yeah. i'm actually due at uh due to go and meet the team in america end of the month which is very exciting um because i've not really met them you know it's it's you know everything's been done in the so virtual you're, you're world. gonna walk in and you're the founder the yeah. founder of better without app yeah oh my gosh and, which will be amazing and, and it'd be nice to meet the team over there that uh you know they're doing some amazing stuff and and part of now you know that the app's part of a much bigger thing um but yeah so so i'm still say working for them a few days a week and then i'm also back in in my old world um of, of hospitality so I'm, I'm contracting for a couple of clients um who are, are doing projects rolling out systems so back in back in that world a bit as well um so yeah it's a it's a juggling act of of different things long long term i'd love i'd love another business i'd learned so much doing yeah. better without um what to and what not to do um yeah. you know i think it is there's so many things you just have no idea when you start yeah. a business and yeah. you know it it's you know one of the big things i think would i back it myself you know, for as long as I did, if I did another one, probably not, probably go for investment earlier or more grants. You've done an amazing job, Johnny. Uh, I'm you. really looking forward to seeing more growth and potential. I want to know how to do all these things. So I, I'm actually <laughs> looking forward to you sharing your tips on how to develop an app and grow and kind of move on from there. Um, Don't. And very, <laughs> uh, yes, no, I'm really interested in what your next business is going to be. But how can people get hold of you, Johnny? I'm on LinkedIn, yes. I'm on LinkedIn, so Johnny Stevens. Um, and, yeah, LinkedIn's probably the best uh, best way. I'll put the links in the show notes. And also, if you haven't already downloaded the Better Without app, um, yeah, it's fantastic. I've got it. I keep following your social media as well um, and, and the kind of growth and, uh, you know, promotion around the US as well as the UK um but um yeah shout out and and let us know what your favorite alcohol free drinks are and get those brands on board because uh yeah. it's only going to grow and and get bigger and bigger yeah johnny thank you so much for your time thank today thank you for having me um we will um keep in touch and uh yeah cheers with an alcohol free mm. ipa <laughs> we'll speak soon <laughs> all right cheers johnny i hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as i have according to I look forward to have you listening in again for the next episode. And in the meantime, I'd love you to rate, review and download this episode.